I woke up this morning at 4.44 and listened to this album. It took 444 walks today. What time is it? It's 4.44. 4. Everybody, it is your girl Bria Van Kooten and I am back with a new video. I told you guys you guys are gonna see my face a lot this weekend. I told you guys I was coming with the videos. If you did not check out my Tamar Braxton, my man video reaction review from yesterday, definitely go check that out. Today, if you can read by the title, we are here. Yeah, title, no pun intended. Title, T-I-T-L-E. Read by the title, we are here with the Jay-Z 444 album review reaction all of that all the goodness if you have twitter you know you saw all the crazy tweets and all of that instagram you saw all the crazy posts and all of that videos and all of that but i'm here with the video reaction review and i'm here today dishing on how i think what i feel about everything i am a big beyonce and jay-z fan i love them both jay-z is my favorite rapper beyonce is my favorite entertainer performer singer of all time i love her so much i love him so much and yeah i was here for this album i was ready i was ready to be in rock nation not formation in rock nation <laughs> i was ready i was here for it and i was ready for jay-z's kool-aid Yes, Beyonce had lemonade, Jay-Z has Kool-Aid. Let's get right into the video. I don't want to chat too much. But yeah, let's just get into it. Let's get into it. So, of course, I listened to the album two and a half times. This morning, the album dropped at like 11.57 last night, 11.57 p.m., you know, three minutes before 12 on June 30th. It only dropped on Tidal, exclusively on Tidal. So, for all the Tidal subscribers and the Sprint users, only we only us can listen to it shout out to my boy my brother my friend josiah shout out to him for the title account like yes i had my title account but i canceled it for apple music because i just felt like at that time i'd rather just pay for apple music so shout out to my brother josiah for the hookup he held it down he came through in the clutch because i was really about to cry if i didn't listen to this album so shout out to him but i am back on my title account so now i have title and now i have Apple Music. I'm gonna keep both now. But yeah, shout out to him for that. Also, shout out to him for doing my full locks. Yes, I forgot to shout him out before. I will link his channel in the description box because he's supposed to be doing a reaction to the album as well in a review. So definitely check him out. Check out his channel. Subscribe. Say Bria sent you comment. All that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm chatting too much. But before we get into the video, I just want to say, stop reposting that stupid tweet about. My wife is not a Kardashian, she's a queen. Jay-Z never said that. So for all the people that did not listen to the album yet, he did not say that at all. He didn't say that at all. Like literally, he did not even say that one bit. So I'm tired of people reposting that, retweeting that, and all the people who didn't hear the album is keep reposting, retweeting, and getting hyped, and he did not even say that. First things first, we see the album, we saw billboards and posters and all of that going around. The first thing we saw was the 444, so everybody just automatically was like, what Jay-Z and Beyonce have planned? Because we all know Beyonce and Jay-Z's number is 4. 4, Beyonce was born September 4, Jay-Z was born December 4th, they got married on April 4th. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 is like popular in their life. Everybody's like, oh, this is the collab album, this is the collab album. Because, you know, it was rumors saying that they was going to have a collab album. They did have a collab. The twins. Get it? <laughs> Found out that it was Jay-Z's album. Mind you, Jay-Z did not say anything. Anything. And this is why I said Beyonce and Jay-Z are just everything. Because they don't even have to promote anything. Like, we did the promotion for Jay. Jay did never came out and said anything that I'm dropping an album. This is me. This is that. This is that. We just talked about it and promoted it and got hype over it. Literally, we promoted his own album without even being paid, basically. <laughs> Shout out to Jay. He was in. He just was inducted into into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, the first hip hop artist to do so, first rapper to do so. So, put my phone down. Give it up for whole like get to the album. Simple, simple album cover. Real simple. That's four, four, four. Like the time, four forty-four. 
because he said at 444 is when he woke up and wrote one of the songs in the between of doing the album he woke up and wrote the title song of the album 444 he got up and wrote this song and mind you the funny thing is the song 444 is four minutes and 44 seconds i was like jay you funny but let's get into the album track list so this is jay-z's new album his last album was magna card holy grail back in 2013 like around this time in 2013 he dropped Mag magna card holy grail he dropped it around july 4th and it's about to be four days gonna be july 4th so it's coming up on the anniversary of magna carta and he dropped the new album which is like yes jay and mind you today was the day that beyonce released the album for in 2011 so i'm like <laughs> They funny. Off with the first song. The first song is called Kill Jay Z. And it's not what you think. He's not saying somebody kill him, kill it. He's basically saying kill the ego in him. Kill your ego. Kill the ego in all of us. Like don't let the ego, our ego basically kill us and hurt us and harm us. So kill that ego. Dim it down. You're gonna hurt you. You're only hurting yourself. So kill the jay-z ego kill that that's what he's saying so i was really feeling it i was really feeling it It kind of remind me it was giving me it was giving me i love kanye tees from the life of pablo like <laughs> he was basically saying being a better father for blue because you know his father wasn't there so he had to he didn't really have a good example which jay-z always brings up in a lot of his songs that he didn't really have an example of a good father type growing up so he has to learn from looking and from growing and from just being a dad to be a good father to blue which leads him to being a better husband to my faith <laughs> but the line that everyone was talking about that really stuck out it was you can't heal what you never reveal which was like yes hope like you can't really heal over something if you never talk about it or if you never like forgive yourself or forgive the person if it's a person that hurt you so in this part he talks a little like kanye which i kind of believe he's talking about kanye he says you got high on the life that shit drugged you you walking around like you invincible you dropped out of school you lost your principles i know people backstabbed you i feel bad too but this fuck everybody attitude ain't natural but you ain't a saint this ain't kumbaya but you got hurt because you did cool by yay Ooh, you gave him 20 mil without blinking. He gave you 20 minutes on stage. Fuck was he thinking? Ooh. Yeah, he, he was talking about himself, but he was also talking about Kanye a little bit in it. And then he also brought up the Solange situation, which I was like. So Solange was right in beating your ass on the elevator. He said, you egg Solange on, knowing all along, all you had to say was, you was wrong. This is why Beyonce was walking out like with that smirk on her face. Like she was like, yeah, yes, it's be his ass. This part where we said insinuated that he cheated on Beyonce. Must you ain't ever been Let the baddest girl in the world get away. I don't even know what to say. Nigga never go, Eric Benet. I don't even know what you would have done. Future niggas plays football. Ooh. He said in the future other niggas playing football with your son. So that's basically, because we all know Eric Benet, he cheated on Halle Berry. That's why I said he didn't really say that he cheated yet. Like, he didn't say it. He said, I, you almost went Eric Benet. Which means he was in the process. He was getting ready. He was stepping towards. He was talking to other people women you know he said almost and then so i'm not gonna condemn my fave yet so then he goes i don't even know what you would have done in the future of the niggas playing football with your son Ooh, like he came for future future he came for you low key and then he put football like he could have said basketball let's go on to the next song the next song is the story of oj and i freaking love 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 this song first of all it samples nina simone's four women one of my favorite 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 songs ever like i love when people sample this in like movies and shows and stuff like that it, like gives me life like, nigga dark nigga full nigga real nigga rich nigga poor nigga house nigga film nigga still a nigga he just talking about the culture like he said oj said i'm not black i'm oj like talking about growing and building your network he's talking about credit he said stop being in the strip club build your credit he's talking about 
y'all want to know why the Jews own everything because they're not out here wasting their money doing all that stupid shit. Like, he's giving us black people, like, he's talking to us black people through his music saying, build something, grow a company, be better, don't be out here, you know, what Kanye said in New Slaves. Don't be out here being new slaves, you know? Hope is just giving us gems, dropping gems on us, like for real, for real. So then we got to the next song, which is Smile. And basically, Smile is talking about smile through whatever. Smile through your hardships, smile through if you're happy, if you're sad, whatever. Just smile, get through it, live life, be happy, enjoy who you are, enjoy life. And don't let any negativity and any distractions knock you down. Smile. He also talks about his mom being a lesbian and accepting her. And accepting that and watching her be happy and watching her be unhappy and happy because I'm happy of her not being who she was and being accepted for who she was and then finding love and being happy with who she is, which I freaking loved. And it samples another sample, it samples Stevie Wonder's um Loves in Need of Love Today, which I was like, this song sounds familiar. And then I heard Stevie's voice and I was like, yes, hold come through with the samples i live for when you know rappers throw in their little samples i love that and then gloria carter mrs carter comes on at the end and starts talking uh, about the end of being free and living your best life and living your life for you just being free and not letting anybody control who you are or who you want to be with and i was like yes Ms. carter come through with the empower Mints, and I'm like, yes. We get to the next song, Caught in Their Eyes, featuring Frank Ocean. And it's basically, this song is just basically, like it sounds, Caught in Your Eyes is being aware of your surroundings, looking around you, watching your surroundings, because you know, you never know who's out to get you. The closest people to you could be out to get you. Because you know, Jay-Z's always woke, and he's always open, and he always seeing stuff like this. So he's warning you, warning us, to watch out like the one line is like your body language is remedial your body language is a little slow it's behind like watch out Ooh, i was like the chills the chills the chills you know then he talk about like killing friends and showing up at the funeral smiling in in the person you just killed mother's face like ooh. he brought it back to juice like <laughs> juice the movie like you know, he shaded prince's family like Shady Prince's family, like, talking about selling caskets. I'm surprised you didn't sell the casket, like, talking about selling tickets to, to view Prince's house, which they did. I was like, Jay, damn, like, he shaded the whole family. Like, he came for the whole, the whole family. I've been to Paris two, two times. I've seen the Eiffel. I've seen the Eiffel. What? He said, I've been to Paris at least, I've been to Paris two times. I've seen the Eiffel, I've seen the Eiffel. Somebody tell me Daisy is wax and he's washed up. Like, what you mean? What are you talking about? Like, what? That line alone took me out. Like, I was like, ho, oh, stop playing. Song. The next song is 444, 4, 4, 4, 4.44. This is the song where he said he woke up at 4.44 and he recorded it. Yes, he said that. He said that. So on the intro, we got Miss Kim Burrell coming through with the vocals on the intro. Then, like I said before, the song is 4 minutes and 44 seconds, which I was like, hopes. You're the GOAT. Basically, this song is the song where he has an open apology to Beyonce, which I'm like, yo. If this story is real, that he really woke up at 4.44, like their connection with 4 is just mad spooky and mad scary because he woke up at 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, like 4, 4, 4, <laughs> and wrote this song, the Apology to Beyonce, Open Apology and all that. He, basically, he's talking about he's sorry, he apologizes to all the women he's let on and um, he's talking about their relationship him and Beyonce relationship at the start of the relationship about 21st birthday he didn't really say like be mine he said don't embarrass me because I mean if you're from Brooklyn you're from New York and like <laughs> you know guys that they shoot their shot and they're trying to talk to you and they be like oh nah, don't embarrass me like because you know they're they probably in front of their friends or their crew and they don't want you to be like no because then they crew gonna be like damn damn like so he like don't embarrass me like if you're from new york you're from brooklyn you you already know so i was i was weak at that part i took for my child to be born to see through a woman's eyes i was like 
So Blue is five. So you mean to tell me five years that ago you wasn't taking my baby serious? Like you wasn't even you didn't you didn't you didn't I felt some type of way, like but I guess they always say when a man has a child, he really grows up. Like if you're a, a man man, like especially if you have a daughter, you really like grow up and you really see through in a see through see a woman in a different light, a different light, I guess. So I guess, but I was just like, so what was Beyonce doing since two thousand three? Because Blue was born in two thousand twelve, so you didn't you was you didn't see a woman's perspective clearly until blue was born i'm sorry <laughs> i felt some type of way because i was like <laughs> my baby beyonce was going through stuff like she had jealous resentment ring the alarm all these songs that i was bopping to going off to she was crying for help i care and i'm over here bopping they're getting my life and my b was crying out for help crying out we didn't even help her we didn't save her you know I'm annoying, but then he goes like he came for everybody. He came for everybody. He said, "Took for these natural twins to believe in miracles." Why he came for everybody's life? <laughs> he let y'all know these are natural twins. Ain't no nothing. This is natural. This is real. This is natural. <laughs> he said, "I went in Beyonce. I went in there. Like I went in, and that happened natural." Like, Yo, this part, like I don't know if I'm thinking too much. But let's get into Beyonce Sorry real quick. Let's 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 get into let's get into sorry because you know. So Beyonce says he's trying to load me up. I'm picking up. Then Hove goes, please pick up the phone, pick up the phone. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Is this a connection? Like he was answering back to Lemonade, like he's pick up the phone. I was like, yo, ho. And he talks about not being present emotionally. And that's why she had those miscarriages. She had stillborns because he wasn't present. So the babies couldn't stick. So again, people were saying he's saying that he cheated. He, to me, until he said I cheated, I can't really say he cheated. Because he just said he wasn't present. Which could be present anyway. It could be present absent from the house. He was outside. It could be present. He wasn't present emotionally. To, to to be a good husband emotionally for B. So I can't really say anything like that. You know, until he said, I cheated, I cheated, I cheated. He didn't specifically say that. Like he insinuated, he didn't say. So I can't really say that. He just could be not present emotionally. And just this song is like being grown to apologize. Like he's teaching y'all men, even women, to be grown to apologize and to accept responsibility for your wrongs. So the part that really took me out where I was really thinking when he said, Menage toi, you risked that for blue, and I was like, so what you trying to say, Hove? Like that had me thinking. That really had me thinking. But let's move on to the next song. We got Family Feuds. Woohoo! This song was everything. My nigga got on. Beyonce with the vocals, with the packing, saying amen. I was like, yes, B. I was here for as soon as it started. I was like, that's Beyonce. Basically, this song is talking about separation in the hip hop community. I was annoyed that people were saying, oh, he got Beyonce in a track where he's talking about cheating on her. He's not talking about cheating on Beyonce in this track. And basically supporting your people because he said, I'll be damned if I drink Belvedere when Puff got, Puff got Ciroc, like, <laughs> supporting black-owned businesses. Like, y'all be really dragging it and really pushing it to the next level. Like, relax. Stop trying to drag the whole story. This part really took me out. Like, he, he plays. Thing as a ugly billionaire, I'm cute. And then Beyonce goes, mmm, in the back. I said, B. <laughs> she hit him with the, mmm. I was like, that's Jay. Let them know. J and B be creeping on Instagram like they be knowing. Don't talk about Jay. He said no such thing as ugly building. Yeah, I'm cute. Like let them know Jay. To me, Jay is cute. I think Jay is cute. He has a great smile. So to all the haters. And when Beyonce said Amen, can I get an Amen from the congregation? I was saying, can I get an Amen from the congregation? Can I get an Amen from the congregation? Amen. 
like she gave me fighting temptation teas. She's giving you fighting temptations teas. I wanted to jump in my phone. She said, "Hey, man!" I just wanted to go <laughs> into my phone and just like. <laughs> Let's get into the next song, which gives you that Caribbean vibe. It is featuring Damian Marley. <laughs> He hit you with the y'all be talking crazy on them IG pics. I told you B and J be lurking. Y'all be fighting on the Beyonce's Instagram pictures and they be watching and lurking and seeing all your comments. You know, and Kill Jay Z, he was talking about pump your ego down. In this song, he's talking about pumping your ego up, basically. <laughs> you know, Jay gotta hit you with the ego, with the I own this, I got that. So that's what this song's basically about. And then he said, I be skipping leg day, but I still run the world. He's watching y'all comments talking about his skinny legs. He knows. He knows. Then we get into the song Moonlight, which I was just blown away by these lyrics. We stuck in La La Land. Even when we win, we gon' lose. Y'all, y'all, because y'all know La La Land, they allegedly won Best Picture, but it was really Moonlight, and then they called them up. Even when we gonna win, we gonna lose. Who's your favorite rapper? Like, bye. Then he comes for all your fave, all your new fave rappers. Talk about y'all got the same flows. Your flow's the same. Please don't talk about guns that you ain't going to use. Y'all always telling yourself, I'm just effing confused. He kind of threw jabs at Bobby Shimmerda and his crew kind of a little bit. Ooh. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> and the one thing I love about Moonlight is samples Fuji La by the Fujis. Like... That really was like can la la man Even when we win we gon' lose We got the same for the flows I don't know who is who Ooh. Hey. Like he came for all your faves all y'all new faves y'all new faves that y'all all the young rappers he came for then we get into the song Marcy Me, which is like a nostalgic walk through Marcy. You guys know Jay's from the Marcy Project. It's a nostalgic walk through the streets, a walk through Brooklyn. He's talking about like the Brooklyn rappers. He's talking about um what he did for Marcy, what he used to do in the streets, and all of that. I, I like Marcy Me. Lisa Bay when it was the Beyonce of her day. I love when he brings up Beyonce. Like he letting y'all know that is his woman, that is his wife. I just I'm hitting my camera. That's a woman, that's his wife, no matter what. That's his wife. He loves her. Don't get it twisted. Jay loves Beyonce. Like, don't get that. Don't get that twisted. Like, he knows what he got. Like, he knows she the shit. So I love when he brings up Beyonce. Like anytime I was like, as you better let it go. So then we get into our last song. Our last song. Our last song is Legacy. Futurin. The amazing, the talented, the beautiful, the star of the Carter family, if y'all don't know, Blue Ivy Carter. <laughs> Yo, when, I, when Blue started, she took me out. Like, she took me out. Like, that just, I was on the train like, oh, my heart. Daddy, Daddy what's, what's so well? <laughs> Like he was basically in this song just talking about the legacy of the Carter family and um, talking about just leaving a legacy and handing things down. He was talking about handing down Rock Nation and leaving this and leaving that. Like basically just what are you going to be remembered for? What are you going to pass down to your family? Talking about how he was the start of it because his family didn't really have nothing so he's starting that whole legacy of passing stuff down and their his kids passing stuff down to their kids so i really was feeling this song it reminded me of i was here by beyonce so i was i like that and i love that it ended the album because the last song of the album i feel like it's supposed to be the most inspiring so this is definitely that because it's talking about you leaving on a path for the future which i really love so yeah but yeah, overall, I really love this album. I really, 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 really love this album. Like, I just love how honest and truthful and to the point it was. Jay, like, really opened up. And we all know Beyonce and Jay-Z are very private. Like, the only time they really, really talk about stuff is in is through their music, which it should be because that is why they're famous. 
because of their music they shouldn't have to come and sit and do interviews or have a reality show and talk about stuff like that like they're in the music industry so their music is their outlet and that is what they how they express themselves so I just love this album. I love honesty. I love truth. I love honesty and truthful music. I love good sampling and good beats and good stuff. So I was here for this album. I really love it. By next week, I should know half of these songs, maybe all of them, because I've been listening and repeating. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'm going to learn it. Oh, so yeah, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I just want to shout out Jay. B and Solange for giving us three amazing empowerment albums for black people, men, women, everybody. Even white people, even Asians, everybody, but mainly for my black people because, you know, they was really empowering us. So I'm just here for a shout out to the Carters, the Knowles, the Fergusons, the whole clan, the Lawsons. Shout out to all y'all because, you know, that's low key my family in my head. But yeah, I'm crazy. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up comment below what's your favorite song did you listen to it do you have title did you hear it what's your favorite song do you like it on my beehive comment what's up bzz, 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 bzz. on my rock rock nation hoff fans we out here i'm waiting for this tour because i hope he goes on tour i'm here for it I'm ready so yeah <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed if this is your first time watching my channel you like you know hit that subscribe button it'll be greatly appreciated and you know check out my blog www.briascloset.com follow me on all social medias at bria van kooten it'll be greatly appreciated and i will see you guys in my next video i should have another video out for you guys coming this sunday so stay tuned for that like i said you'll be seeing my face way 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 more because you know we out here. Bria's Closet, we out here. Bria Van Kooten, it's your girl. Like, we out here. So, peace, love. I'll see you guys in my next video. Definitely check out my description box. I'll link my friend Josiah's channel. Go watch his videos. Check it out and all of that. And, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.